You grind tungsten carbide with resin bonded diamond wheels. There's a lot of disagreement in the shop about how hard to stick the wheel. And now that some of our new machines have auto stickers, we're even more confused. Any suggestions? The purpose of sticking the wheel uh, is to clear away the resin bond right in the uh, proximity of the surface and uh, give space for chip formation. After you true the wheel, the uh, resin bond is sitting very, very high and we got to clear away just a little bit of that resin bond uh, to give space for those tungsten carbide chips to come out during grinding. So what we have here is a picture of a resin bonded diamond wheel after we've trued it but before we've stuck it. So what you can see is this kind of flat surface and the diamonds and the resin are all there. Um, and then we stick the wheel and uh, it doesn't affect the diamonds but the sticking action clears away the resin bond. Here's another picture, zoomed in a little closer. So here we can see the individual diamond grits standing just high enough above the bond material so that we have that space for chip formation. We want to stick it hard enough so that that aluminum oxide can penetrate between the diamonds and clear away a little resin, but we don't want to stick it so hard that we clear away too much resin and end up clearing away some of those diamonds. And another reason for sticking is to clear away loading. Resin bonded diamond wheels are notorious when grinding of tungsten carbide of getting loaded. This is an electron microscope photograph of a resin bonded diamond wheel that's been trued and stuck. And then part of that wheel had been grinding tungsten carbide and part of that wheel had not been grinding. So what we see here on top is a very badly loaded region we can't even see the diamond or the resin below because it's just covered in a sea of tungsten carbide cobalt that's loaded into the wheel. Where below we have kind of the virgin surface, so the surface that was trued and stuck. It hasn't been doing any grinding, so now we can see those diamonds standing prominently above the bond material. So the sticking after truing clears away the resin and then after grinding clears away the loaded tungsten carbide cobalt mixture. So here's a company I was at uh, a few weeks ago. They were flute grinding tungsten carbide end mills and they started off and they stuck their wheel. Number one, they stuck it with a grit size that was too large. And number two, they stuck it timidly. Then they started to grind. Now the grinding power after they stuck it was around one kilowatt. And then as that wheel loads up, that power starts to increase. So the operator says, oh, okay, we're getting a little loading. It's time to stick. But number one, he sticks it with a grit size in the stick that's too large, so it can't fit between the diamonds. And number two, he sticks it timidly. So he sticks it timidly. He keeps grinding. And oh, okay, well, the power did drop just a little bit between part 11 and part 12, but not much. And the power is going to go up. He's going to stick it again. If he sticks it timidly, power is going to drop just a little bit. Power is going to go up. Power is going to get so high. Temperatures are going to get high. The resin is going to start getting soft. He's going to start ripping out grits from the bond material. Now he's going to have to go back and true his wheel. So really, the guy needs to stick the wheel hard to begin with and stick it hard enough to clear away some of that or all of that or most of it of that tungsten carbide that's loaded in. Here's a guy who stuck it right. So this is a different operation, but again, this is tungsten carbide grinding uh, of end mills with a resin bonded diamond wheel. And here we have the power, flute one, flute two, flute three, flute four, given in black, blue, red, and green. And we see, okay, we're at about 1.2 kilowatts. Power is going up as the wheel loads. But after six parts, he sticks the wheel. He sticks it hard. He sticks it with the right grit size and boom, and we're back to almost to where we started. Power's reasonably low. So that's good. Sticks it again, sticks it again. So his power is constantly staying low enough so that temperatures are not getting up. He's not getting all those bad problems associated with excessive power and excessive temperature. So you may say, well, how hard should I stick it? You know, is there a guideline? So here's a graph that I put together based on some tests. And I assign an aggressiveness number um, to the sticking. 
and we want an aggressiveness number of about 250. So I put together a chart to say, okay, if I want that aggressiveness of the sticking to be about 250 or in red, and I've got a certain wheel speed, how hard should I stick it, or how much time should it take to stick 25 mil or one inch of material? So if I've got my stick, let's say I'm running carbide at 20 meters per second, I start sticking into the wheel, it should take me about eh, five seconds to stick that one inch. That's a reasonable sticking speed. Now for you guys who do it by hand, be careful because we don't want to be down in the region of blood, which is down below, where we stick it too hard and maybe chop our thumb off. For you guys who are using uh, some of the auto stickers that you're seeing more and more of these days, well, that's pretty easy. You can just assign a speed to the stick. How fast should I plunge that stick in? So if it takes me five seconds to plunge 25 millimeters, five millimeters per second, there you go. Tell the machine to plunge it around five, four, five, six millimeters per second, something like that. That's a good reasonable sticking for most grinding wheels using uh, diamond and resin bond.